Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's podcast. We're talking about the accuracy of space science in movies. Let's see. This movie is accurate. I made sure that there was breathable atmosphere in this environment before I took my helmet off. That's yeah. good. Sound effects were, were really good in this movie. <laughs> Very low budget. <laughs> All right, I have been looking forward to this since um, the idea was suggested a couple of weeks ago. And it was my challenge to put together material that I could talk to you guys about. You've probably seen some of these movies, you might not have seen all of them. And I've done my best to avoid talking about really specific plot points. I, I'm really sensitive to spoilers. I, I don't like it when someone tells me something about a movie that's better discovered by myself as I'm watching it in the movie itself. So I'm gonna try to avoid ruining any of these movies for you guys. Yeah. Cool. Where's everybody from this morning? Uh, okay. Well, someone says Lost in Space. Lost in Space. Oh, Lost in Space. Okay, I have <laughs> not... Actually, I did watch the, the, the most recent um, Netflix, Lost in Space. I watched the first season, not the second season. Um, I'm not totally prepared to talk about that one. Uh, Ethan's asking if I'm a bigger Star Wars fan or a Star Trek fan. You're going to find out later uh, in this webinar. Yeah. Cool. We got Tennessee. We got Oregon. We got Green Bay, Wisconsin. Peyton's in a spacecraft. Nice. Welcome, Peyton. Uh, Ethan's in quarantine. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, Indiana, uh, Clearwater. Clearwater, Mexico, and my house. Okay, good. Uh, All right. Pluto. So, <laughs> Pluto. <laughs> okay, everyone, let me pop into the slideshow. We're going to start talking about these things here. Um, so the first two that I wanted to talk about was maybe the worst possible example and the best possible example. Armageddon, 1998. Um, <laughs> this movie is one of the most inaccurate things I have ever seen. And I have rarely been so entertained in my entire life. Great movie, really fun. But if you see anything happening in there that looks scientific, it is not. I that is that movie. Pro probably not accurate. Um, I, I heard from a well driller that they got the the beingness, they got the the personality of a lot of the well drillers right. <laughs> okay, good. So they got the personalities of the characters right. Um, and Bruce Willis stars in it, and he's great. He's a lot of fun. But the part where he's like flying a space shuttle, nope, that that's not going to happen. Um, I was watching an interview with an actual astronaut. Wow. And he said, it would be a lot, lot, lot easier to just take astronauts and train them to be like oil drillers rather than take oil drillers and teach them <laughs> to become astronauts. Yeah, yeah that was, a, yeah. There yeah. was a lot of things in there. There's a lot of things that were wrong. Fun movie. And I, I loved every time I watched it. Um, I want to watch it again now. Yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> uh, the, the basic plot of this one is you need to... They need, there's an asteroid is going to come and hit the Earth. This team of oil drillers need to fly up to the asteroid, land on it, drill into it, put a nuclear bomb in the middle, and blow it up. To save mankind. Right. And is this actually a threat? Is this a real threat? Asteroids? Asteroids. Yeah, right? definitely. Um, who here has ever met a dinosaur in person? No <laughs> one. They went extinct 65, 69 million years ago. Um, after what we're pretty sure is a asteroid hit the earth, created a bunch of bad weather effects, disrupted the food chain, the asteroids died, the, the, the asteroids died. Uh, the, the dinosaurs died, the asteroid died too. The asteroid did not survive. As, I, as we should impact. define, that's a big word, Armageddon. What is that, what is that? Oh, mean? right, Armageddon means the end of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, so anyway, that, that's like the worst possible example I could think of in space science in a movie. How about the best? Apollo 13. This movie was made in 1995. This is the story of a um, of a real mission that happened in the 1960s, 70s, 70s. NASA was 
trying to get more people to the moon. We had landed Apollo 11 on the moon. We had landed Apollo 12 on the moon. So we'd sent Apollo 13 and um, something went wrong. They, they had, there was uh, in one of their oxygen tanks exploded when they were on the way to the moon. Not only did, it, did they lose a bunch of their oxygen, but it also damaged their spacecraft so that they couldn't land on the moon. Um, no spoilers here because it's a historical event that you can go and look up and know about. They survived, they made it back, but there was a ton that they had to do very carefully in order to make it back alive. Yeah. And this movie- Even characters they got- Captures right, that, yeah. Back, the way they had the characters. Um, it was it was a uh, 1970s when the Apollo 13 event happened. I got to meet um, the head of um, the command the commander for that was organizing it. Oh, mission um, control. Um, yeah, mission oh. control. Um, I'm drawing a blank on his name. Uh, you got the uh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, I'll I'll remember it. <laughs> Jif and anyway, great gentleman, super responsible. His uh, his thing is still inspiring NASA. Tough and competent. I like his that mantra. Is insane. So Apollo 13 got pretty much everything right in that movie. It's an outstanding film. What did it get wrong? Maybe a couple lines of dialogue are not exactly as they were said in real life. But you know what? That's totally okay. It's a movie. You're going to want to change things so that they're a little bit more dramatic and compelling. Um, Gene Kranz was his name. Gene Kranz. There Gene you go. Kranz. I, I, Flight director. We might all be familiar <laughs> with that saying, Houston, we have a problem. Great line, historic. That's not actually what he said, though. Uh, it sounds great. What happened was one of the dudes on the spaceship was said, okay, Houston, and then his friend interrupted him and said, I believe we've had a problem here. And Luzma, the guy down in Houston, said, this is Houston. Say again, please. And then a third, the third astronaut came in and said, Houston, we've had a problem. Or I, it might have been, we've had a problem here. Um, Houston, we have had a problem. Again. It's dialogue. I'm totally okay with them changing that a little bit. Just a little factoid. Yeah. And hats off to Tom Hanks for going through all that research and his entire team that put that movie together. I mean, I, it, to me, like just the, the scope of what had to take place and the research and mm -hmm. the study on that is just it is amazing that they put that they together. They were extremely detailed in there and how everything was put together. Um, Oh, Lorna was asking, what was that beeping? There was a lot of beeping sound here. There's trucks <laughs> moving stuff outside our window. We couldn't um, make them not, so. No, oh, it's the space station it's behind fine. us. Yeah, it's the space station. <laughs> uh, we wouldn't hear that. There's no sound in space, um, we'll which we'll talk about soon. Okay, so <laughs> another incredible thing that Apollo 13 did is um, they got the weightlessness of space right. And the way that they did that was they actually shot the weightless scenes in weightlessness, which is really difficult to do. You know, Diego and I could pretend to be weightless right now. Whoa, Whoa. I'm, I'm weightless. But <laughs> it doesn't look very convincing to you because we're not weightless. Um, you could use computer graphics to fake it and you could have um, kind of wires and you could use computer graphics to like make my hair kind of float as if there was no gravity. What, a, what they did for Apollo 13 was they took the entire inside of their spaceship and they built it inside of a 747, a jet. And <clears throat> they went and they flew and you, you fly up really strong for 20 seconds and then you like cut the engine, you cut the thrust, you stop pushing forward and the plane starts drifting and it drifts and it drifts and you've got about 20 seconds of zero gravity. Now we could demonstrate that really quick. I have a little mock-up of a show. Oh, there you go. And when you, yeah, there we go. When you pick up your hand like this for just a second, I'm not holding the shuttle and you've got that little, you've got that little moment of weightlessness where it's just sitting there. And that's basically what they're doing with, with this. Um, yeah graphic shows so graphic. when you watch apollo 13 if you watch all of the any scene where there's weightlessness you'll notice that no shot is longer than about 10 to 15 seconds at the absolute longest and you know it'll cut to a different camera angle and the guy will keep speaking <laughs> and then it'll cut back to a different camera angle 
That's because they could only get like 20 seconds of full zero gravity as the plane was at the top and starting to go back down in this flight path. So, this, so they did that over and over and over and over and over and over again to film so, this movie. So this thing is just flying. It flies patterns like that over and over. And then all between that, they have 20 seconds, 20 seconds of flight time, uh, 20 uh, filming time in between right. there. Yeah. So um, this, th th this type of maneuver, that this type of plane that does this, they, they use this to train astronauts before they go to space so that astronauts have experienced zero gravity before. So it's not brand new to them when they get into space. Um, astronauts sometimes call this the vomit comet. Um, because <laughs> when, when, one of the nice things about gravity is it pulls down and it keeps your food in your stomach. Um, and when you lose that constant pulling down and keeping your food in your stomach, it can make some people nauseous. It can make you feel like you wanna throw up. And some people do. Yeah, I know a few teachers who've went on the vomit <laughs> comet before, and before they go on, they they take a drug called Dramamine, and it's it's to keep you from um, vomiting. Mm -hmm. And so, because it, it messes with your inner ear, which throws off your balance, and so people can get um, really sick from it. That's so, so cool. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to feel more than normal gravity, almost twice the amount of normal gravity as the plane is going up. And then you're gonna feel zero gravity for a while, for about 20 seconds. And then the plane will level out and it'll, you know, you don't wanna crash. So you're gonna feel extra gravity again as it's pulling out of that dive. I love Apollo 13, great movie. <laughs> um, gravity, now, a lot of these films you guys might not have seen. And uh, make sure that before you watch a movie that you're the right age for it, but, I, I wanted to talk about some of my favorite scenes that were accurate and not accurate. So when you do watch them, you know what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. um, in Gravity, uh, there, it's the story of a, an astronaut. Um, she's up with her team and they're fixing the Hubble Space Telescope in space. And there's a problem, there's a disaster. She gets separated from them and she needs to figure out how to survive in space and get back to Earth. Um, <clears throat> and after... So she's working on the Hubble and then everything goes wrong. She goes from the Hubble Space Telescope to the International Space Station. It's a really cool part of the movie, but it's totally wrong. Mm -hmm. You can't go from the Hubble Space Telescope to the International Space Station. Not easily. You need a lot of fuel and you need a lot of time in order to do it. Um, that blue line there, that shows Hubble's orbit around the Earth. And that red line, it shows the International Space Station's orbit around the Earth. They orbit in very different ways. Their paths would only cross at two points, like right there, and then again on the other side would their paths cross. And even at their absolute closest, they are more than 100 kilometers away from each other. Wow. The International Space Station at the highest is at 420 kilometers, and the Hubble Space Telescope is at 559 kilometers. So more than 100 yeah, kilometers away, you would need a lot of fuel and time yeah, in order to get there. Opposite speeds. <laughs> different speeds. It's, there's all kinds of problems to it. Um, so that wouldn't have worked. But it's a movie, so we'll <laughs> allow it. Um, yeah, that's okay. What did gravity get right? Sound in space. Nothing that happens around her in space during the entire movie can you hear? It's absolutely silent, at least for those bits. You know, if something blows up, you don't hear it. If something is, you know, moving or creaking, you don't hear like the creak of metal, like you're on a ship that's moving on the ocean or something like that. You just hear pretty much nothing. You hear the breathing of the character that you're looking at in the movie. Because in a spacesuit, you could hear your breathing, you could hear your heartbeat. Um, She's here working with a tool. It's like a, it's like a drill. And in this scene, she's like drilling, trying to, to screw something in or unscrew something. And you can hear the drill going because it's vibrating in her hand and the vibration is moving through her body and she can hear that vibration as a low kind of rumble sound. Um, yeah, so um, some science behind that is you need air to 
you need air or some kind of medium for sound vibrations to go through something. There's no sound in space. So when you hear, uh, when you see like explosions from sci-fi movies. And, and you hear this like. <laughs> you nope. wouldn't hear an explosion in space. You wouldn't hear it until actual debris would like hit your spaceship. That's right. And then it would rattle through the air in your spaceship. But that would be the only way. It would, it would sound more like someone throwing a handful of gravel at your car rather than you know, the right. vests are blowing right, up. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, uh, can you hear the character's voice? Yes, in, in that scene, you can hear the character's voice because what you're hearing is basically what the character is hearing. You're, it's like the microphone is inside the helmet. So you're hearing only what she would hear, her voice, her breathing, her heartbeat, her teammates talking to her on the radio, and, you know, like the vibration of stuff as she's holding on to it. Yeah, and I, um, just to make that distinction, sound um, doesn't transfer, but radio waves can transfer. So radio waves, which convert to sound, and then... That's right. Yeah. Radio is totally fine. Yep. Okay, good. Uh, Interstellar. <laughs> I just watched oh, this again last such night. Such a good movie. Um, incredible film. It, get, it makes up a bunch of stuff. Um, when you're watching science fiction, you're watching science fiction there's fiction there's made up things that are not real and that's totally okay um i i have no problem with the movie making up things that don't actually exist because it's a lot of fun that's one of the purposes of movies but when they try to get the science right and fail that annoys me when they try to get the science right and get it right it makes me really happy because they didn't have to they didn't have to get it right. They chose to do the extra work to make sure that it was right. They didn't need to get the sound right in gravity, but they chose to, and they spent a lot of time on it. And they won an Oscar for it, so that's good. Um, Evelyn, no, they did not shoot gravity in space. They did not shoot it in space, and they did not shoot the weightless scenes in that vomit comet plane like Apollo 13 did. That one was all, it was like green screen, computer animation, it looks great. It looks really, really good. Uh, but it wasn't actually filmed in space. So Interstellar makes up a bunch of stuff. May, like the whole last hour of the movie, it's pretty much all made up, not actual science stuff. Hypothetically. It's totally fine. Mm -hmm. uh, but here's what it did get right. And it made a lot of news at the time for this. So um, it, this is not a big spoiler. There's a black hole in the movie. It's on a bunch of the posters and stuff. So I felt comfortable telling you guys about this. Go see it if you haven't seen it. I yes. want you guys to see it. And this is what the black hole looks like in the movie. Now, if you were with me a couple of weeks ago and Diego, when we were talking about the life cycles of stars and black holes, and if you know about black holes, you're like, wait a second. A black hole is black. Why is there a bunch of light around it? Light can't get out of a black hole. You're right. So that sphere in the middle, that's the black hole. No light is coming out of that. But when a black hole is eating matter, when it's eating, you know, let's say a star or a planet got too close to it and it starts to eat up that planet or that star, that matter is going to start spinning around the black hole as it, as it gets pulled into it. Like when you pull out the, the stopper in your drain and you get a whirlpool and the water starts spinning around and then it gets sucked into the drain. It's basically what's happening here. Uh, but <clears throat> <clears throat> take your hands, put them together and rub them. Go ahead, Diego. You start feeling heat. That friction of your hands rubbing together is causing heat. It's generating energy. That's what's happening to all this matter that's getting pulled into the black hole. It's getting rubbed together. It's getting squished together as it gets closer and closer and moves faster and faster to the black hole. That generates energy in the form of heat and light. So that's why there's this light disk around it. Uh, but what about the top and the bottom? Okay, so the people that made this movie spent a lot of time talking to scientists, talking to black hole scientists, talking to people who have been studying black holes their entire lives. And they were like, okay, help, um, help us with this. We wanna make sure that we get this part right. 
And they were like, okay. So they gave him a bunch of math and they took the math and they put it into their visual effects programs in order to make this. And it, it's, it took a very long time for the computer to figure out how to show this correctly. Um, every frame of that took, some of those frames took like a hundred hours for the computer to figure out exactly how it would look. Um, wow. All right, we're gonna get back to that in a second. Mm -hmm. There are not two disks of glowing light around the black hole. There's only one. There's only that disk that cuts through the middle right there. But black hole, the gravity of it is so strong that it can bend light. So let's say that you were, okay, let's look at this lower left part here. Um, you're looking at the black hole and there's this disc spinning around the black hole. You can see right here, you would see exactly right there, no problem. But the stuff on the far side of the black hole, that light is getting bent as it passes the black hole. So you could actually see behind it, even though you don't have a direct line of sight to it, that light is getting bent back towards you and you can see the backside of it. So it's really and, weird. And that light is starlight or is that stuff emanating from the black hole itself? So that is, that is the disc of matter that the black that the black hole is eating. Oh, so the matter that's coming right. through. Uh -huh. So let's say like a planet wandered too close. And, and the friction and the friction example was that matter because that matters that matters making friction on itself. It's, it's make like, it's making friction because as it gets pulled in, it's not a smooth process getting pulled into a black hole. It's it's messy as and it hits other things. It's hitting other speed. things and it's bumping together. It's like a roaring river of stuff getting pulled in. Like a grinder with yeah. all the stuff around it. Yeah. Um, so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this picture is fake, but it's also the best vi visualization of a black hole that we've ever had, at least up to that point. Um, and so the guys that were working on this movie, they were making the visual effects, they're making stuff up for a sci-fi movie but they actually wrote scientific papers about it. They, there were some scientific discoveries that happened because of that picture, that fake picture that you can see right there. <laughs> and they wrote scientific articles and they published them in science journals. They're like, guys, check this out. We've that is so cool. never really tried to make a black hole look like this, but this is what it would look like in real life. This is cool news. When James was researching this and telling me about what he was going to present today, I was just like, oh, this is going to be cool. Yeah. There's so many things I want to study up more on. Hopefully you guys at home are getting excited about studying more about all these things. Yeah, I hope so. And if, if this is too much for you, I totally understand and I apologize. The simple part of it is that looks weird, but it's totally accurate science-wise, and that's really cool. If it just looks cool to you for now, and then you learn the science of it later, that's fine. Um, yeah. Okay, good. Has anyone ever been sucked into a black hole? Lorna, <laughs> no, they haven't. Um, just about a week ago, scientists discovered the closest black hole that they've ever seen to Earth, and it's hundreds of light years away. It's a long ways away. Uh, we're super safe from it. If anyone did get sucked into a black hole, they would die. It is not a place for humans to live. Yeah. yeah nobody we know of has been sucked into a black hole. <laughs> That's true. No one that we know of. Thank you. All right. And there's that. Oh, boy. OK. The Martian. This movie was made in 2015. Uh, it was like three years in a row. There was these big science space blockbusters gravity and then the next year interstellar and then the next year the martian um it was a great time for for space science movies um this is this movie is based on a book written by a guy who did a lot of research to try to have it as accurate as possible um he got a few things wrong on purpose he knew he was getting the science wrong and it was he's like i'm doing this on purpose uh, at the very beginning of the film, again, no spoilers here because it's in all the trailers and it's like the main thing that starts the movie. Uh, there's a team of NASA astronauts on Mars, 
on a mission. There's, they're, they're supposed to be there for like a month. But a week into the mission, this big windstorm comes up and they have to leave because the wind is so strong, it's going to push their rocket over. And if their rocket falls over from the wind, they're stuck there and they're, they're all going to die. So that's not good. So they all have to leave. <laughs> um, one, of, one of the members of the mission, played by Matt Damon, um, he gets hit by something on the way. They're like running through this windstorm to the rocket and this thing flies by and it hits him and his his teammates think that he's dead, so they leave him behind, which is sounds kind of mean, but that's what would actually happen. It's if you stop and go back for him, it means that you could die too. And they had all agreed beforehand, if one of us dies, you leave us behind. So it was all part of the agreement. Wow, this is getting really intense and like upsetting. <laughs> But it's not meant to be that way. <laughs> no, I, I'm so sorry, Diego. Um, Got to save the Martian. <laughs> yeah, all, all, all of that was, was not accurate. Um, there are windstorms on Mars, and the winds can blow up to 150 kilometers per hour. And electrical storms, huh? Uh, I don't know about electrical I, storms. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's, there's the and, well, th that makes sense, though. Uh -huh. That makes sense. Here's the thing, though. The atmosphere on Mars is only one one hundredth the density that it is here on Earth. So even if the wind was blowing at 150, 200 kilometers per hour, it would feel about <laughs> like that. It would feel like you know, a very light breeze because the wind's moving fast, but there's not a lot of it. Yeah, like the rovers, the, they rely on those storms to come by and just blow the dust off the... Yeah, the um, solar panels, but they're not. But they're not <clears throat> worried about them knocking the rovers over or anything like that. They just blow the dust off the panels. Yeah. So, um, but the guy who wrote the book and who helped them write the movie knew he was getting it wrong, and he did it on purpose because he wanted the bad guy in the movie to be the environment. He didn't want the bad guy to be another human being. He didn't want the bad guy to be you know, so, like a human making a mistake. He wanted to be mankind versus the environment. The elements. Yeah. yeah. And he was very, he was very public about that. So no problem there. <laughs> and what did the rest of, uh, pretty much the rest of the movie, there's a lot of really, really accurate science mm -hmm. in it. And if you read the book, it, he does not spare you the details. He gets, it's like, here's the exact formula for what's happening here. Here's the exact math. I think that's I, why I was so embraced by NASA. Oh yeah, people. It was so good. Here's the exact math of how that would work. Here's the exact, you know, uh, chemistry formulas for, how, for what's happening there. Um, it shows him growing food on Mars. He has a few potatoes and he's able to take those potatoes and grow more potatoes and live off of that for a while. <laughs> That's noisy out there. I apologize. It's our Mars rover that just landed. It's uh... <laughs> this is <laughs> this is how you know that we're not actually in space right now because you can hear sound outside <laughs> of our window. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, the water thing. I want to touch the on water that. thing. Right. Yeah. So right before, um, was it Curiosity? Yep. Okay. Curiosity scrapes the ground. Curiosity is one of the rovers that's on Mars right now. Scrapes the ground, finds water ice on Mars. This was uh, just weeks after the movie was released. And Matt Damon tweeted, uh, he got a lot of press about this at the time. He tweeted, that would have been nice to know when I was stuck on Mars. Because <laughs> in the movie, he has to make water chemically. He has to get hydrogen and oxygen through a different process and almost blows himself up mm -hmm. making water. But in reality, there's actually abundant, relatively abundant water on Mars in the form of water ice right. under the surface. But the, the, the math and the science that they knew at the time when they made this movie, they got yeah. it as accurate That's right. as possible. That's right, yeah, yeah. Which you could still make water like sure. that. Sure, oh yeah, yeah totally. Totally made water like that. So. Don't try it at home. In the movie, <laughs> he almost blows himself up doing it. It is a dangerous process. Don't try it. But the yeah. science is accurate. Yeah, we've I've blown I've blown I've uh, blown up oxygen and hydrogen in the lab. And when you mix it with when you have just the right ratios, oxygen, hydrogen, in a balloon like this, if you have your windows closed, you'll blow out the windows in a in a small lab. Okay. Yeah. Don't yeah, do that. Yeah. Yeah. Don't it's, do that. It's, a, it's Good. real deal powerful. <laughs> yep. Oh, Mackenzie and Denali are asking, did the Martian get back to Earth? I'm not going to answer that question. <laughs> that. Uh, that would definitely spoil the end of the movie. 
Um, so I'm you so haven't sorry. Seen it. I'm so excited for you to go see this. You're I'm so have, sorry, but you're gonna have a great time I can't tell you that. Movie. Lauren is asking, has anyone ever seen a real black hole with their eyes? Is there a known black hole in space? Uh, yes, no, and yes. So we have seen, uh, we do have a real picture of a real black hole. Um, actually, maybe you can find that and throw that into the next slide. Sure, sure. Um, we, we got a real picture of one just a year or two ago. It was a really big moment in science. It's a bit fuzzy. It's not perfect, but it's really exciting. Have we seen it with our own eyes? No, we have to use very special telescopes and computer programs to put it all together. Um, if we were close enough to see it with our own eyes, it would probably look a little bit like that, which is pretty cool. Um, and is there a known black hole in space? Yep, the, the one that we looked at uh, is, you know, that, that's, that definitely exists. We know where many of them are, even if we can't see it exactly, we know from what's happening around it that it exists there. Let's see. Oh, hey. yeah. Is it not there? Uh, you updated it, but my slideshow doesn't update because oh, I made a presentation. Oh, because you're in the middle of it. Ah, All okay. right, sorry guys. Okay. We're running run a long time. I think we're doing okay. I here, think we're do doing this. okay. Let's see how this works. That's. Oh, here we go. Is that going to work? Yeah. <laughs> I see all my tabs open. <laughs> <laughs> that is an actual picture of a black hole. You can see the glowing disk of stuff around the black hole and then just blackness on the inside. Um, and some reflection of our roof. <laughs> and some reflection. You, you can see the like notes I've made on the whiteboard on the other side of the room. You just get some behind the scenes stuff here. Yeah. <coughs> just um, for you. <laughs> good. <laughs> Olivia is asking, has anyone ever been born in space? Nope, not yet. Um, the people that they sent up to space, the longest anyone has ever been in space is one year. And that was uh, very specifically, they, they took twins. I forget their names, Scott. Scott Kelly and Mark Kelly. Scott Kelly and Mark Kelly. They were identical twins, so they knew that their DNA was exactly the same. And one of them stayed on Earth. They were both trained as astronauts for NASA. One stayed on Earth, and the other one went to the International Space Station for an entire year. And they uh, took really close measurements of everything about these guys and their bodies and their DNA and everything like that, and watched them very closely for that year and after that year so that they could compare what happens to your DNA? What happens to the guy in space versus the guy on the ground? And they can see what changed because they're identical twins. Okay. The longest was uh, by Russian cosmonaut Valery, Valery Poyolakov. And he has a record 437 437 days, days in space. Okay, my error. It's, it's a Russian that's been in space the longest, not an American. 1994 to 1995. My bad. Okay. Good job, Valeri. It's incredible. Yeah. There's just... Guardians of the Galaxy. I have a feeling you guys <laughs> have probably seen this one. What did it get wrong? It made up a bunch of stuff. Don't worry about it. The, the, I mean, it's made up superhero stuff. They're not trying to get anything right. Iron Man suit? Nope. Uh, the way that they like warp through space, their spaceships. That's all made up and it's brilliant. I love it. I like how Rocket is this sentient being though. Rocket is, he's, he's aware. When I, see, <laughs> when I see raccoons around campus and I see their personalities and how they move and everything, I'm like, you know. <laughs> I don't know, I see a lot of raccoons and they look pretty intelligent. They're like, I'm gonna wait for you to go to sleep before I eat your trash. Yeah, yeah, they're, <coughs> they're yep. interesting creatures. <laughs> Here's what Guardians of the Galaxy did get right. That part where Star-Lord goes out into space and he takes off his, his face mask thing and he's out there for like an entire minute. Uh, I mean, how many movies have you seen where someone's exposed to space and they, they're instantly dead, they're gone, right? Um, Guardians of the Galaxy actually got it right. Um, you could survive in space for maybe a minute. Would it be comfortable? No. Would it hurt a lot? Yes. Would you need to go to the hospital afterwards? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Um, but they, they do know that there's been a couple of accidents of um, humans in 
vacuum chambers on earth where something went wrong and they were exposed. Oh yeah, that's right. So like there was a guy, they were in a room, they were testing something with, with total vacuum, total, no air in there at all. They, they, he got into a suit, he went into the room, they shut the room tight, and they pumped all the air out of the room. So it was empty like it is in space. And something happened, like something got ripped in his suit or like one of the hoses fell out or something happened and he lost all of his air instantly. Like what happened if you broke your suit in space? And he, um, it was not on purpose. They would never do this to a human on purpose because <laughs> it's really mean and dangerous. But um, he went unconscious in about 10 or 12 seconds uh, from lack of oxygen. We're breathing, mm -hmm. right? And we need oxygen in order to stay awake and in order to survive. Um, your body loses oxygen super quick when you're exposed to the vacuum. The, the nothingness around you pulls that oxygen out. Um, so he went unconscious uh, after about 10 seconds. And of course, it happened and an alarm started going off and everyone, they like pumped air back into the room. They rushed in there and, and they saved him. But he was in there for about a minute. He was in there for about 60 seconds before they were able to get him out, which is about how long you see Star-Lord in space there. And you would have ice crystals form mm -hmm. um, on your face. Not um, a good day. <laughs> uh, this guy reported he, he was um, partially blind afterwards for a little bit. After a little bit, Everything came back. He was totally fine. There were no long-term uh, health effects from <laughs> That's this. Amazing. Yeah, I wonder if this is the same story. Um, I visited the evacuated cha chamber in Houston. Yes, it's just a giant room about the size of Delphi. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that's where they test equipment for vacuum and mm -hmm. low temperatures. And the story I heard was one astronaut, he, and there's probably multiple stories, but um, one astronaut decompressed and he got, ended up getting frostbite on his fingers, but mm -hmm. survived and like amazing. That's good. So I wonder, I, I haven't studied all the history, but I wonder if that's the same, the same event. Yeah. So um, when you watch Guardians of the Galaxy and you see Star-Lord survive for like a minute in space, you know, once he takes his mask off, um, he's only conscious for like 10 seconds and then he kind of falls asleep. That's about how it would be. <laughs> um, and is it super duper cold in space? Yes. If you're not in direct sunlight, it, it'll be like negative 200 degrees Celsius. That's super cold. But you will lose body heat slower in space than you will in Antarctica. Wow. <laughs> because I'm glad you asked. Uh, you... Your, your body needs to touch stuff in order for it to lose heat quickly, mm -hmm. right? In Antarctica, there's going to be cold wind blowing past you. And that cold wind, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take that heat and take it away from you. But in space, there's nothing to it's come and vacuum. take stuff away. Just like my hot coffee, this is it's an vacuum. evacuated. Um, so in the middle of this is a vacuum. Right. And so the coffee stays hotter longer. And so it's not going to lose its heat. Yeah. Okay. I, I need to speed up here. I'm doing that thing where I take too long again. Um, 2001, A Space Odyssey. Classic space movie. Um, and one of the things it really got right was they had these rotating space habitats. I didn't see this till about two years ago. People were uh, mad great at movie. me. People were mad at me. You haven't seen Space Odyssey. <laughs> I know that this isn't Good going movie. to come through super well for you guys. It's, I know it's going to be a little um, glitchy for you to watch this, but it'll give you the right idea. And I also know that there's no sound, and that's okay. Um, but you see, he's running around on the inside. What's happening is he's in the inside of a ship that's spinning. And the spinning pushes him outwards. And so it makes it feel that the gravity is pulling him out. Artificial gravity. It's artificial gravity. We, we, we made it by spinning this thing around. And he can run around on the inside of this, of this uh, spaceship like it's a running track. 
on a lot of a lot of people a lot of proposals have this kind of mechanism mm -hmm. um, in their uh, proposal for a new space station where you yeah. have gravity because that's one of the biggest problems of space is astronauts right now they have to train for two hours a day just to keep up just to maintain their body yep okay Great movie, I like that. Um, let's see, I'm not gonna talk about Wally because we're running low on time here. Great movie. Uh, okay. <clears throat> I promised my friend uh, that I would talk about the movie 2012 real quick because she wanted to know what was accurate science-wise in that movie. Cool. Nothing. <laughs> I mean, they're on Earth, so they got that part right. They breathe air and they speak English. That's kind of about it. They did not care about accuracy in this movie at all. It's just fun. So well, what it got right? Nope. What it got wrong? Yep. If you're asking me, did they get this wrong in there? The answer is probably yes. <laughs> not going to spend a lot of time on that. Uh, the Day After Tomorrow is another disaster movie. What did it get right? It's very slightly better than the movie 2012, <laughs> but only by a little bit. Yeah. They made up pretty much everything in there, and it's totally fine. It's just for entertainment. And what was cool, though, is that right here where we're at in Oregon was once covered in an ice cap. Yes. It's, it's mind-boggling how much ice was here, uh, you know, a long, long time ago. Yeah. So in ways, like, you see how, like, the Earth can go through changes. The Earth has been through changes. Yes, big changes. Heated up and cooled down and lots of different problems. Okay. Someone was asking earlier on, am I a bigger Star Trek fan or Star Wars <laughs> fan? Star Wars, all the way. I same love Star here. Trek. Same here. But love, more, love more, more for Star Wars. We probably just started a fight in, in the Q&A <laughs> section. Um, all right. So this is, in my opinion, one of the best movies ever. But ever, in, ever, ever, ever. ever. <laughs> um, in one scene, every time I watch it, I'm like, you know, that's not how it would actually be. And yes, I'm, 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 just, I'm just kind of having fun with it. But the scene in Empire Strikes Back where they land inside the asteroid and they come out and uh, there's like a bit of an atmosphere in there and all that stuff. That's fine. You, they, they came up with made up reasons why there was an atmosphere in there. Um, they're, they're in, they landed inside this giant space worm, right? Um, they do need masks in order to breathe. So, <laughs> so that works and stuff. The only problem with this scene that's not scientifically accurate in my uninformed opinion <laughs> is the gravity. Uh -huh. They're walking around and there's oh one, yeah, there's and yeah, there's, there's one G of gravity. Of but they're on an asteroid. It's a big asteroid, but the gravity should be no more than maybe one tenth of that what we have on Earth. Probably much, 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 much less. Uh, but they're walking around, you know, normal gravity. And then there's no nothing covering their eyes. I mean, yeah. you know, it's probably toxic gas on an asteroid. It's fine. <laughs> you know, it, it's got to see the actors' faces. It's fantasy in space. <laughs> You're gonna make up most of it anyway. Uh, and then it turns out that they're they had landed inside this giant space worm called an exogorth. Exogorth. <laughs> that's that's the name of that. Wait, so who creature. who who gets to name it? Was did Luca? Did George Lucas? Come up with this I name? have no idea. Probably if the people that made the movie didn't come up with an, an official name, uh -huh. um, the fan base is organized enough that they would call it something, they would all call it that, and then the movie studio would have to call it that. Interesting. Yeah. You know, in this thing, have you seen the movie Tremors? Yeah. Yeah. Does, does that thing look like one of the things from Tremors? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, kind of. I wonder if they just borrowed the set prop or something. <laughs> like, there we go. Let's make another movie. So anyway, it's a movie. It's made up. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Is that the end? Okay, that's... So I had to skip some stuff, but I got to the end. I know I was missing a lot of questions in there, and I apologize. I knew that we had to go fast. Otherwise, we would take an extra hour like we always do. Am I saying that Star Wars series. is not a good movie? I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that they didn't try to get the science right in it because it's not a science fiction movie. It's a fantasy movie. There's, you know, they have magic space wizards. So everything's made up. It's totally fine. But it was in a galaxy far, far away. Galaxy far, far away. <laughs> Maybe that's how things actually were over there. You know, we don't know. We don't know. Um, if you have any questions, we've got a about one minute left. So if you have any questions about movies that you've seen that you're wondering about, 
throw them into the Q&A section. If I don't answer them on camera here, I'm gonna stick around. Diego and I are gonna stick around for a few minutes afterwards and answer them in the Q&A section. Lorna's asking about Wally. Okay, let me go back to Wally yes, super yes. quick. Uh, cool. Um, <coughs> we got artificial Wally. gravity in Wally. You can tell, like, I, I, I guess gravity is my thing. Um, <laughs> there's a scene near the end where the spaceship tilts and everyone starts like sliding down <laughs> as if they're on a sh like a ship on the sea that's tilting. Uh -huh. But I think that even if the ship tilted, gravity would still, if it has an artificial gravity thing that the ship is making, then down would always be down no matter which way you're pointing. So that's fine. But here's what it got right. <laughs> The thing where humans all got really out of shape and their, their muscles were weak and their bones were weak because they weren't exercising, they weren't walking around by themselves, they were in lighter gravity than normal. That's right, that's what would happen. And if you did that for 700 years, people would probably look like that. Um, so good Swollen job. Swollen heads. Yep. Okay. I'm going to stick around in the Q&A section and answer some final things, but we have to end off here. Oh, what are we doing tomorrow? We we're, we're talking that? about what happens on the International Space Station. We've had people on the International Space Station nonstop for the last 20 years. What do they do up there all day? Do they just sit there and watch Netflix? Let's find out tomorrow. Diego's put a lot of fascinating information about this together. Join us for that. Uh, head on over to heronbooks.com. There's a lot of courses there. that You can learn about science. You can learn about physics. You can learn about math. And you can use this stuff so that when you watch a movie, you can see, is it right? Or are they making it up? Both are fine. Okay. Suit up. Suit up. There we go. Bye, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>